My name is Benjamin Faust, and today we're going to talk about the G equals T plus D plus M model, which is a way for us to model the choices that governments have to make when they are funding their operations. You should already know that economics is the study of choices which are brought on by scarcity. We always want more than we're able to do. We always have more desire than we have resources to fill those desires. So the government reflects that. They also have the same issue we do. And so here's the model, G equals T plus D plus M. Uh, first of all though, what do those stand for? Hmm, well, if let's go ahead and define G as government spending. So government spending is equal to T, D, and M put together. Can you think of how the government funds its operations? Just think about it. What do you think T stands for? What do you think D stands for? What do you think M stands for? Here's the answer. Let's see how many you got right. So the G stands for government spending. We already said that. The T stands for tax revenue. All right, tax revenue. D stands for debt or borrowing. And M stands for monetization. Okay, now monetization, we're going to define that as when the government is printing money for the purposes of paying for government spending or for the purposes of perhaps paying off debt. So there are multiple reasons the government may expand the money supply, but in this case, monetization is due to the government needing to print money in order to directly spend it for our purposes here. So how does this work? Well, over a long period of time, that's why I put three bars instead of two, it's kind of a law, and the small t here stands for time, across a long period of time, your government spending needs to be equal to your tax revenue. You can't really overspend in, a, in an infinite series uh, more than you're bringing in in tax revenue. However, temporarily, which is how this model operates, is on a period to period basis, maybe year to year or month to month, you can run what we call a deficit. So if you have spending and you're spending more than your tax revenue is, there's something you can do about it. By the way, we call that a deficit when you're spending more than you're bringing in. And if you happen to be lucky enough to be spending less than you're bringing in, that's called a surplus. So what does it look like when we have a deficit? We don't have too much of a problem here uh, because we have extra money coming in, but when we have a deficit, we still have to pay the bills. So how does that look? So if we have a deficit, we might need to add some borrowing. I put this in red because we have a problem. We cannot, this does not work. Our government spending is greater than our tax revenue. If we're unable to lower our spending, if we're unable to raise our tax revenue, let me go ahead and put that on the board. If we cannot lower our spending, if we cannot raise our tax revenue, if we're unable to do that politically or otherwise, we have to add something temporary and that is debt. So what we do is we balance it out. Notice our, our sign went from greater than to equal. Now we've just added some debt and we've balanced our equation out so we can continue operating in the short term using deficit spending, using borrowing in order to make up the difference. All right, but what happens if we get in a situation where we can't borrow money? This is where you start getting into uh, a country in trouble, a country in crisis. You can't borrow any more money either because you borrowed too much before or you're borrowing too suddenly or there's something going on where people don't think you're gonna be able to pay your debt off in fact, we can even put like a bar here saying you're trying to raise your debt more, but you can't, there's some limit to it. Well, then you have to go down here. You're, you're back in the same situation. Your government spending is greater than your tax revenue plus the borrowing you're doing. Well, at that point, you're gonna have to add monetization to it, expand the money supply, print some money, buy what you need, and that balances out your equation again. So your government spending is gonna be equal to your tax revenue plus your debt, whatever you will be able to borrow, plus your monetization, your money supply expansion there. Now, when we look at this, there are consequences when you do that. If your taxes are too high, people are unhappy. If your borrowing is too high, it impacts the economy because it crowds out borrowing that private sector could be doing. And if your monetization is too high, it causes inflation. And so this model is very flexible you can actually use math with it. So here we go. Let's go ahead and do one. So let's say you have uh, $1,200 million. I know that's 1.2 billion. Let's say it's a small country. You have $12 million being spent, uh, or 12, uh, 12, let's just call it 1,200. So 1,200 being spent, and yet 
your tax revenue is only at 1,000. And so you've got a situation, you've got deficit, and you've got to balance that out. Let's say you do have borrowing available. So what you can do is 1,200. Go ahead and set it to equal. Your tax revenue is still 1,000. How much do you suppose we're gonna to have to borrow in order to make ends meet? If you said 200, you are correct. Very good, okay? So that's how you use math with this. Let's do another scenario. Let's say your spending has gone up to 1,500 and you're still borrowing 2,000, but your creditors say no more. You're locked at 200. You cannot borrow any more. So you have to rewrite the equation. You're actually forced here into a greater than situation you've got to do something to fix it. So let's take that 1,500, put it equal to your 1,000 in tax revenue, plus your 200 in borrowing. Since you still can't make up for it, what do you suppose we have to do? Uh, how much do we have to print in order to make this work? If you said 300, you are correct. So we just add 300 there on the end. And how you can check yourself is you add these together, they should equal what's over here. You're always setting the government spending equal to everything else. You can do math with this. You can conceptually think about it. But government spending is always equal to what you bring in in taxes, what you bring in from borrowing, and what you bring in from printing. My name is Benjamin Faust and I love learning. I hope you do too and if you enjoy learning about economics, like and subscribe for more content.